Not all enemies in Pikmin are created equally. Some are stronger, others cooler, some just suck, and others are more liked overall. So it was my goal to figure out which enemy was the all-time favorite from the Pikmin community. This was with enemies and not characters like Moss or Louie. <coughs> Louie and Moss are opponents, yes, but they don't really fall into the enemy category. I should mention this was only with Pikmin 4 enemies, so I guess not all-time favorite, but close enough. Unless there are major fans for specific enemies like the Titan Dweevil or this duck guy, the end result should be the exact same. The process was pretty simple. Get a number generator to spit out 110 numbers in the random order. Then, using the order of the numbers, place the corresponding Piclopedia entry in a 110 tournament bracket, making the creation of these brackets completely random, dispassionate, fair to big and small alike. The only problem was maybe getting fans' favorites to battle too early on, but the RNG worked out pretty well overall, so I left it as is. The total votes on these polls were only a few thousand, but I do believe they are an accurate representation of the Pikmin community's opinion as a whole. This is mainly because of the following. Let's say a poll had 500 votes. Option A had 60% of the vote, and option B had 40% of the vote. When the votes reached 1000, option A still had 60%, and B still had 40%. Even when the polls reached 3000 votes or even more, the ratio stayed the exact same, so one could assume that with 10,000 or even 100,000 votes, the ratio would remain the same. With all these formalities out of the way, let's get into the brackets. Kicking off our first round, we had the Annoyed Beetle, the Pearly Clam Clam, the Jumble Bulborp, and the Bearded Amprat. In last place, the Annoyed Beetle only got 9% of the vote, followed by the Bearded Amprat with 10% of the vote, and the Pearly Clam Clam with 13%. And with a commanding lead of 67%, the Jumbo Bulborb won. I thought people just loved this enemy's hiding ability, but it was also a sign of what was to come with Bulborbs. In the second vote, we have the Sheer Flea in last with 3%, the Frosty Bulborb with an unlucky 13%, and in second place, we have the Arctic Cannon Beetle with 35% of the vote, and this happy little Gildy Mandui with 49%. Seeing him happy made me happy just like him. Next up we had the Icy Blowhog in last with 5% of the vote, not much ahead was the Tusk Blowhog at 7%, and again another 2% of a lead, we had the Waddlepuss at 9%, with the winner being the Bulborb at 79%. I told you the Jumbo Bulborb was a sign of what was to come, and it was the beginning of the Bulborb rampage of the first bracket. In the next poll, we have the Hydro Dweevil only getting 3% of the vote, followed by the White Spectralid and the Bloom Cap Bloister. With a commanding lead, we got Baldy Longlegs with 76% of the vote. In the following bracket, we found that jellyfishing isn't very popular in Pikmin since the lesser spotted jelly float came in dead last with 8%. The Titan Blowhog was next up with a small lead at 12%, and the Fulix sat at 30% which many comments stated this was disappointing, but the Bulborb gang was just too strong, and the Whip Tongue Bulborb took the prize with 50% of the vote. Next up we had the Joust Mite in last, followed by the Albino Dwarf Bulborb at 13%. I know, I know, the Bulborb gang failed him. Then we had the Scorch Cake at 14%, and in first we got the Talk Stool with 64% of the vote. The following bracket had the Bog Swallow in last with 2%, and our first tie in second place with the Hermit Cromad and the Armored Cannon Larva, both sitting at 4%. And next up we had the Goat himself, the Giant Breadbug, with the biggest win so far at 89%. In the next bracket we had the Scudder Chuck who got chucked into last place with the Fiery Dweevil at 3%. The Waddle Quaff was at 5%, and with the winner at an 89% as well, we had the Smoky Prog, who actually managed to get more votes on his poll. Could this mean a rude awakening was in store for the giant breadbug? In the next bracket, we had the Yellow Spectralid in last, followed by the Bugad Cromad at 14%. Then we had the Yellow Wally Hop at 31%. In first, another Bulborb, we had the Fiery Bulblax with 50%. The Bulborg gang was still going strong. 
The next one had the Dwarf Frosty Bulborb in last at 4%, followed by the Mama Shear Grub in third with 5%, the Horned Cannon Beetle with a solid 34%, but the winner was the Emperor Bulblax with 57% of the vote. We then had the Mucker Skate, followed by the Red Spectralid, the Watery Blowhog, and winning it was the Puffy Blowhog at 67%. This next bracket was a Bulborb fight plus the Slooch. We had the Dwarf Bulborb at 10%, the Moldy Dwarf Bulborb next up, and to the Slooch's credit, he got second place with 14% of the vote. But all fear the Spotted Bull Bear, and therefore it comes in first at 63% of the vote. The next poll was actually kind of unique since it was the only poll in the entire tournament to have the winner change three times. Skitterleaf unfortunately was always last. However, the Chili Hop was the original winner but ended up with 26% of the vote. The Iridescent Flint Beetle came in second and was winning at a time, but when it was all said and done, the Fiery Blowhog held on to first place with 38% of the vote. In the next bracket, we had the Woolpole at 7%, followed by the Porquilion and the Iridescent Glint Beetle at 22%. And in a devastating blow to the beetle community, we have the Empress Bulblax in first with 60% of the vote. And while I personally hate this enemy's design, the community does not lie. So the queen moves forward. Next up, we had the Water Dumple at 2%. I also don't like these enemies. I guess you guys don't really like them either. The Honey Wisp was next at 6%. And this little cute miniature Snoot Whacker came in second, but only got 9% of the vote. This is because the competition was the man at legs, and he clearly won that bracket with 82% of the vote. Next up we had the female shear grub in last, followed by the swooping snitch bug and the aristro crab offspring. And in first place, we have the mamuda with 89% of the vote. Next up was the blizzarding blowhog, followed by the doodle bug and the sun squish. And winning this was the Downy Snagret at 60% of the vote. In the following bracket, we had another clear winner. In last place was the Arctic Cannon Larva with only 1%, followed by the Wally Hop and the Creeping Cassanthema. And steamrolling the competition, we have the Water Wraith at 85%. There were some comments at this point bringing up that the formatting had removed many beloved enemies, but alas, that's how these tournaments work, so we had to keep moving forward. In the next bracket, we technically had a tie for last place, but the Shearwig actually had less than 1% of the vote. However, YouTube polls always round up. I guess it takes a specific kind of person in order to like a Shearwig. Following that, we had the Anode Dweevil at 1%, the Snowfake Fluttertail at 4%, and with the biggest win of the entire first bracket, we have the new GOAT, the King of Boss Battles, Groovy Longlegs, with an astounding 95% of the vote. In the following bracket, we have the Floody Jousemite at 11%, followed by the Prickle Puff. And winning this smaller bracket due to a repeat from the RNG number generator, we have the Grub Chucker at 75%. Next up we had the Little Spiders at 4%, the Startle Spore at 6%, the Gildermander came in second with 24% of the vote, and while I agree with some of these comments, again, this is how these things kinda work. And in first place we have the Ancient Sirehound at 67%. Next up we had the Venom Dweevil in last, followed by the Shock Cake, the Bulborb Larva, and the Puffstool controlling the competition with 81% of the vote. In the following one, we had the Skeeter Skate, followed by the Freeze Cake, the Desiccated Skitter Leaf, and in first was the Mammoth Snoot Whacker. And so ends the last round of the first stage. To start this next round of the tournament, we had a really big bracket. I think this is also the best time to bring up the reason why these little brackets here were smaller, and this is because YouTube's limitation only allowing for four options once in a poll, making me have to create multiple brackets of two and three. With that out of the way, let's continue. In the next poll, we had the male shear grub, followed by the jumble bulborb, and the bread bug's first appearance, winning at 84%. The following one had the gildy mandwi with only 33%, 
and the Bull Borb winning with 67%. Next up was the Moldy Slooch followed by the Dwarf Bull Borb, and winning again was Baldy Longlegs at 65%. In the next poll we had the Ice Blown Dweevil followed by the Arachnode and the Whipton Bull Borb in first with 84%. The next bracket had the Orange Bulborb followed by the Crusted Rumpup and the Talk Stool at 54%. Next up we had the Battle of the Titans, the Giant Breadbug versus the Smoky Prog. With what I said earlier about the Giant Breadbug potentially getting a Rude Awakening, that didn't happen at all. However, the vote difference did show that the Giant Breadbug wasn't invincible. In the next one we had the Toity Bloister at 10%, followed by the Fiery Bullblacks and the Burrowing Snagger with a nice 69%. Then we had the Puffy Blowhog lose to the Emperor Bullblacks, and in the following bracket we had the Withering Blowhog, the Spotty Bullbear, and the Sovereign Bullblacks at 79%. Next up was the Fiery Blowhog at 23%, losing to the Empress Bullblacks. The Lesser Spotted Jelly Float came in last, followed by the Master Hop and Man at Legs again gunning down the competition with 83% of the vote. And in this next bracket we had two of the community's favorites. We had the Downy Snagret who got downed pretty bad with only 12% of the vote and Mamuda winning with a very high 88%. Next up we had the Puckering Blino against the Dwarf Bull Bear. But yet again steamrolling the competition, we have Water Wraith with 90% of the vote. Then we had Grub Chucker with 5%, and to no one's surprise, Groovy Longlegs winning again with 95%, making Groovy win with the highest percentage not once, but twice. Then we had the Snowy Blowhog, followed by the Peckish Aristocrab and the Ancient Sirehound winning the bracket by a large margin. And to close off the second round of this tournament, we had the Mammoth Snootwhacker losing to the Puffstool with 81%. Next up we have the quarterfinals. Even though there are 16 enemies left, which is a lot more than the usual 8 for a quarterfinals, I decided to do groups of four to reduce the length of the tournament. So in this first round of quarterfinals, we had the Whip Tongue Bullborb in last, followed by the Bullborb, then Baldy Longlegs, and in first place, we have the Breadbug. In the second round of quarterfinals, we had the Emperor Bullblacks, followed by the Talk Stool, then the Burrowing Snagret, and another Breadbug win, we have the Giant Breadbug. In the following quarterfinals, we had the Empress Bullblacks followed by the Sovereign Bullblacks and then the Mamuda with 33% and Man at Legs at 50%. Unfortunately, right here, my favorite enemy was defeated. But since the Mamuda actually got the fifth amount of votes in this round, and by the power invested in me, I will place him in fifth overall in this tournament. It's just an honorary title, but let me have it. In the next round we had the Puff Stool, followed by the Ancient Sire Hound and the Water Wraith, and in first place, with a very large lead, we had Groovy Longlegs at 69%. And with that, we have the quarterfinals completed, and now we move on to the semifinals. The semifinals we had two breadbugs versus two spiders. These are the top four favorite enemies in the community mostly. As a test, I brought in two others that destroyed their brackets and put them against the loser of the third place round. More on that in a bit. So for the first semi-final round, we had the Breadbug versus the Giant Breadbug. And coming in first place, we had the Giant Breadbug with 69% of the vote. In the Spider versus Spider bracket, we had Groovy Longlegs absolutely pummel Man at Legs winning with 83%. And now that we have our two winners and two eliminated, we needed to see who was in third place. So, we did. The third place was Man at Legs versus Breadbug, with Man at Legs only getting 35% and Breadbug getting a 65%. And then as a test just to see if these top four were really the top four, as I mentioned earlier, 
I put Smoky Prog against Water Wraith against the 4th place holder, Man at Legs. And the following poll had Man at Legs in last, followed by Smoky Prog and Water Wraith winning by a comfortable margin. These results showed that the top 4 kinda weren't the top 4. But I can comfortably say that these 7 enemies are the 7 most liked overall by the community. Enough with the sidetrack though, and let's get on to the finals. In the finals we had the king from 20 years ago, and the current king from 2023, which one is truly more popular? The giant breadbug the goat himself reigning over the Pikmin community for the greater part of two decades, versus groovy long legs, the undisputed king throughout this entire tournament, winning every single round by the largest amount. Statistically speaking, Giant Breadbug was the underdog in this matchup, and it was time to see if Groovy Longlegs could prove that. It took a while for the votes to pile up, but the dust settled very early on and there was a clear winner within the first 5 minutes. Two entered, one came out on top. We have the community's favorite enemy. We have Groovy Longlegs. I know, the Breadbug gang is strong, has deep roots, but as some of the comments said, the future is now. Times change. Groovy Longlegs is the new king. And with that, the 110 tournament bracket finally ends, with the community's favorite enemy chosen. I'd love to hear what your personal favorite enemy is in the comments below, drop a like, and I'll catch you next time.